You may not realize it, but a seedling heat mat can make a big difference in the success you have with starting your seeds. Join me today as I show you how to use a heat mat to start seeds. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and the idea behind a seedling heat mat is quite simple. We're using a heat generating source to warm up the soil that we're starting our seeds in. And that warmer temperature will improve germination. The way it works is the same way that your home heating pad works. It generates heat. And while a heating pad might be good for sore muscles, it's really not suited for growing seedlings. In fact, I don't recommend at all using a heating pad to place a wet tray of soil on to heat it up. Instead, we have specialty heat mats that are sized for the typical tray we're going to use to start our seeds. It's fully waterproof and it generates just the amount of heat that most of our seeds need. Most of the heat mats I've used over the years just have a single temperature that they reach, but now I'm using the Spider Farmer heat mat that actually has a thermostat control. The reason that makes a difference comes down to what type of seeds you want to start. And I have started many, many seeds over the years, but I'm trying to get the best methods when it comes to starting my seeds. So. I have a couple different types of thermometers that I'm going to use to show you just exactly how the heat mats work and then explain the benefits of having control over the specific temperatures. I start my seeds in my basement where the air temperature is a pretty consistent 66 degrees Fahrenheit. When I fill a tray with soil for starting my seeds, and then measure the temperature of that soil, well, it shows that it ends up being closer to 62 or 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Those temperatures are warm enough to germinate most of the seeds that I'm growing in my garden, but particularly tomatoes and peppers, they like a warmer temperature. The tomatoes and peppers, if the soil temperature is closer to that 62 Fahrenheit range, can take between two and four weeks to germinate. They have an ideal temperature closer to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I can warm up my soil closer to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, I can expect my pepper and tomato seeds to germinate in just about a week. Most seeds will benefit from a warmer soil when it comes to germination. Some seeds like spinach and celery can actually germinate when the temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit, even colder, but it can take weeks and weeks for that germination to happen. They prefer temperatures closer to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And if it gets much hotter than that, even 75 degrees Fahrenheit, may inhibit germination completely. And so that leads to a basic guideline when using seed mats as part of your seed germination. They don't work best for those seeds that prefer cool weather. So your cool season crops, lettuce, spinach, celery, those type of plants that can actually be started outdoors in your garden in spring when it's still cold outside, you really don't need to use a heat mat for any of those. But all those other plants that you're only growing during the hot summer months, like eggplant and tomato and pepper and squash and melon, they will benefit from the use of a heat mat. A typical heat mat, like most of us start with, has one temperature. So this one has a 96 and a half degree Fahrenheit temperature that it's producing all the time. And that warms up the soil quite a bit so that this potting mix I'm using 
registers about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That temperature is much too hot for those cool season plants. They may germinate with soil that is that warm, but they're going to grow very, very quickly to the point that you'll probably have leggy seedlings in just the first couple days after they emerge. That temperature will vary depending on how moist your potting mix is and how wet you keep your seedling environment. And that's where the thermostat controlled spider farmer heat mat offers an advantage. I set my thermostat for 75 degrees Fahrenheit and it didn't take long for the mat to heat up to about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. But with the flat in place, when I take a reading, it has cooled down dramatically and now it's only about 79 degrees Fahrenheit. And the soil temperature is pretty close to that setting. It's holding at about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. This spider farmer's thermostat allows me to set the temperature between 40 and 108 degrees Fahrenheit. And by just using a little probe that goes into the soil, I can ensure that temperature stays pretty much where I set it. When you understand that different seeds have different temperatures for their ideal germination point, it makes sense that having a heat mat that allows you to control it to get that precise temperature can make a difference. A few days, maybe even a few weeks in the amount of time that you're going to spend trying to get that germination to happen. And I've included a link below to the University of California that identifies those ranges and amount of days that it takes for the seeds to germinate best. Because this spider farmer mat can generate heat so effectively, and the heat is coming from the bottom of the tray or pot you're placing on it, the temperature at the root level can be 50 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit above the ambient temperature in just two minutes. The heat mats are most beneficial for seed germination. And after all my seeds have germinated and those little seedlings are growing, I remove the heat mats because just about everything that we're starting from seed will grow just fine with an ambient air temperature of about 65 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. A soil that's warmer than the air tends to dry out much faster. I just put this tray in place yesterday and the surface is almost completely dry. A few years ago, I lost an entire flat of pepper seedlings. I had them on a heat mat after they were growing and I missed one regular watering. And that one watering made all the difference because the soil dried out and all of those seedlings died. Normally, I'll have a humidity dome over my seeds as they're germinating. It definitely helps with germination and it helps keep the soil from drying out too quickly. But once the seedlings start growing, I remove that humidity dome and that's where the potential problem comes in. That soil can dry out and kill those seedlings. So once the seedlings are growing, you don't need to be as concerned about the soil temperature anymore. The normal air temperature is fine. If it gets too cold, you can bring in a portable heater to warm the space. But be careful about using a heat mat for too long. I leave my heat mats plugged in and generating heat 24 hours a day for the entire germination time. Now, according to the University of California, there are some plants that can benefit from a cooling off period for a brief period at night, most notably celery. So if you're using heat mats for those type of plants that can benefit from varying temperature, 
it makes sense to use something like a spider farmer heat mat that allows you to control that temperature with a thermostat. If you've ever wondered why some of your seeds just seem to take a long time to germinate when you start them indoors, it could be because of the soil temperature and a heat mat might be the solution to have better success with your germination. I think it also offers opportunity for some experimentation. I'll be growing some seeds using a heat mat and others without a heat mat and compare the germination rates to see if I can duplicate what the University of California has reported. I'm also planning to grow some super hot chili peppers. And from experience, those hot peppers take longer to germinate than just a standard pepper seed. So I'll have a couple trays on a couple different heat mats set at different temperatures and try to see if maybe a temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit will lead to quicker germination than another that's only growing at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I find it all interesting and it's definitely something you should consider when growing seeds indoors. Use a heat mat. If you want to learn more about growing seeds indoors, well then check out one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.